Okay, so last night I finished this video, and uh, you'll see the one comment we got almost immediately was from Jamie. First of all, Jamie, I actually was nice enough to give you a thank you about helping me solve this quickly because I was tired and not thinking straight. Um, but at the same time, I got to hear that I didn't test any tubes. So what we're going to do is we're going to ignore the roll chart that's on this because it's garbage. It's been said many times that it's garbage. We're going to use this chart set, um, tube data for ICO, blah, 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 published January 1st of 1978. The older roll charts for these had a habit of either jamming like too much voltage in them and making bad things happen. And um, I tried some of the tubes with the roll chart that's on here. Yeah, there, there's a roll chart right there. Um, I tried a few with that roll chart and I found that I think it's jamming too much current through some of these tubes and it really can be kind of abusive to them. So what we've got it set up here is for an 807. And I have a few different tubes here. This is, and what's funny is you'll find that like some model tubes, it tends to rate, you know, it'll it'll put them in the good, but it only kind of goes me for like almost new tube, and then you know whatever. But um, this is a Westinghouse branded 807. It is very healthy. It only has a few hours on it. Um, I had two different 807s that I was debating about using in one of my amps, and. This, of course, is a top cap tube, so we have to install that there. there. Now you can see my top cap. Does that make you all happy? Okay. And we'll give it a moment to warm up. It should be lighting up and glowing, and it is. And for our chart, we are intended to test two, three, and then four is, a, you have to push the leak button. So two, three, four, and C for cap. And then we merit test on the cap, which is the anode. So, two, the needle doesn't move at all. Three, the needle really doesn't move, it just kind of jerked a little bit. Four, we have to push the leak, and the needle should go to zero and stay at zero. Good. And then C, and again, nothing should happen, and at this point we're ready to pull the merit lever, and it does go to the green area of good, kind of the bottom area of good. But um, on the 807s, this chart plays them n gently as opposed to the earlier chart, which beats them up. Oh my goodness, the tube tester, you can hear the transformer just singing and it whips that needle. It's just bad. So thank you, whoever kept publishing new, better manuals. So that is what a good tube looks like. And sometimes it's nice to have kind of a known good tube to use as a reference, um, if you can. But if you're working with the same types of tubes on the same tester, after a while you'll kind of get the gist of how that tester treats a given type of tube. This is a General Electric branded 807. 2, OK, 3, OK, 4, with the leak button, OK, and cap. And we'll give it a moment to warm up before we pull the lever. Do, 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 do. If we let it warm up a little longer, it'll probably do a little better, but as we pull the lever, as you can see, we only come up to... <clears throat> we got half the emission of a new tube. So, this tube is tired, and I knew that. It came out of somebody's junk box. And then this was the most interesting. This was also a junk box tube. It says Jan CHS Sylvania, so this is a military tube. I figured, oh, military tubes are tough as nails. This will be a great tube. So we'll hook that one up. And I'm actually kind of glad to have this just to show you. And I think this thing is sliding out of frame. Okay. Let's watch two. Oh, come on. You did it yesterday. Two. Three. Uh-oh. Look at our needle. That's not good. That's really not good. This tube has shorts leakage somewhere. Not good. 
and then 4 with leak, it's supposed to go down to 0 and stay at 0. But uh, it's not doing that. That thing's bobbling all over the place. This tube, not good. And look at cap. There's no leakage to the cap area. But at this point, there's no point in moving further. If I were to merit test this tube, something bad might very well happen, and we might have sparks and fire. Um, that would be fun, but I'm not in the mood for that kind of fun. So, there. I tested some tubes on my ICO, and I found you a bad one. Should I try to test some other kind of tube that I might not have tried? Oh, what the heck. Okay, so this is a 6K6. It's a pento tube. Kind of similarities to a 6V6, and it in some cases has been used instead of a 6V6, and you can usually put a 6V6 in place of a 6K6, but not vice versa. This is a pentode rather than being a beam, called a beam tetrode, uh, which is the 6V6, I believe that's correct. So, anyway, this is a junk box 6K6 that I got for free while helping somebody on something. And I lost where it was on my page because I wasn't paying attention. Let's see, there it is. Okay, so I do have all the parameters set for it. And we're supposed to test 3, 4, 5, and 8 with the leakage button. 3, 4, 5, 8, we should get the swing, leak there. So yes, we're okay there. And then, which one do we test the merit? Merit, we test on 3. So we go to 3, and then we pull the lever and see if the tube is in my, should go in the trash, basically. And, eh, not so hot. Alright, not so hot. But, before I cash it in and toss this. Let me go get a known good 6K6 and see what happens. Okay, this is a known healthy 6K6. Let's see what happens when we pull the merit lever here. Okay, so we're just hitting the bottom of the good scale. So, again, I, with the parameters we've got here, we're, it's being stingy on some of these tubes, and that is because this chart was revised to be gentler and kinder to our tubes than the previous charts were. So getting a little bit lower readings is not necessarily horrible. And actually, if we are patient and give that tube a little bit of time to really get hopping, it may do better in a little bit. Yeah, see we're actually, with the bend in the needle it's hard to tell, but we're at the bottom of the good range. And that's a young healthy 6K6. They don't really quite output like a 6V6. Let's see if the parameters for a 6V6 are really any different. The grid and plate are changed here. Okay, or it doesn't affect anything because I haven't pulled the lever. But we should have the same positions. We have 6, 1, 4, 3, 5, and we do have, because this is, you know, pin out versus, and then we have 6, 2, 1, 1, 1. So, same pin out, and then, okay, instead of V at 3, we have it at 4, and then we have this at 2. So this will be for a 6V6. Let's see if it's more generous with a 6V6. Because my finding with the 807s and some of the tubes, uh, it's generous, it seems to be generous with like 12 AXs, and it's stingy with the 807, so it might just be, you know, <sighs> and somebody's going to go, you should go get it calibrated. Now I'll figure it out myself, thank you. Alright, so we've got 40, 40 correct parameters, um, and should be testing for, let's just see if it's got any shorts, same business here. So, Three, four, five, eight with leak. Good there. And back to three to pull the lever. And see, nice and generous. 
it likes the 6v6. And these are both pretty darn healthy tubes. So what you'll find is if you're, you know, comparing your junk box tubes and looking for the stronger or the lesser or whatever, it will tell you, you know, which is the strongest of a few tubes. So it's nice to have a known strong, known good, known healthy tube to test against. So there, Jamie, I tested some tubes. Are you happy now? Anyway, that's how it works. And I was actually glad that I had a tube with a short in it for demonstration purposes, although this is going to go in the trash because it's not good doing anybody any good sitting in my drawer. Have a great night.